This is Auburn Football Every Day, driven by Toyota. Welcome to Auburn Football Every Day, driven by Toyota. On the show today, we look back at Auburn's win at Vanderbilt. You get to meet Auburn defensive lineman Marcus Harris, a special scholarship surprise as well. And we'll take a look ahead as Auburn heads to Arkansas. But first, let's head to the Auburn locker room, Auburn and Vanderbilt. So happy and blessed to be able to represent these colors right here, represent Auburn University, man. I'm so excited. It feels great to come back to a place I know and get a win. It starts with the O-line, man. They make great blocks, and I just, I do what I do off their blocks. I just, I, hey, when you're a playmaker, you got to make plays. Yeah, I feel like we're all on the same page right now. We're really moving forward in a good direction. Like you said, it's not perfect. It never will be perfect. We're going to strive for perfection and, and settle for excellence. That's the goal. Uh, we're not there yet, but we're making strides in the right direction. And so uh, just keep doing that, keep communicating with each other, and you guys feel good with the, the plays that we're, we're calling right now. Hey, I thought it was a home game. We had more orange and blue than I seen black. So I love you, Arby fans. Can you keep coming? We got Arkansas next week. We need all your support. Please come. We love you guys. Thank y'all. Auburn football every day is brought to you by Toyota. Let's go places. And by Tiger Talk, the official radio show of the Auburn Tigers. Tune in Thursdays at 6 p.m. Central on your local Auburn Sports Network affiliate. Welcome back on Auburn Football Every Day, driven by Toyota. Let's take a look at the highlights. Auburn and Vanderbilt, brought to you by Truckworks. To the line of scrimmage, Thorne from the gun. This time he does hand off. Jarquez Hunter in the clear. 45 50. He may be gone. He is gone. 30, 25, 15, 10, 5. Touchdown, Jarquez Hunter. 67 yards. Touchdown, Auburn. 67 yards run by Jarquez. Opened up on that left offensive side of that offensive line with Gunnar Britton and, and with Dylan Wade. Those guys winning at the point of attack right there. Great run, great play design. Two plays, Auburn touchdown. That's what you want to see on the road starting fast. First and 10 from the 25. It's going to be the tie or the back Alexander who loses three yards in the backfield. Looks to throw. Steps and he throws. Complete. Javarius Johnson out to the 35-yard line in an Auburn first down. Four play action throw. Johnson again at the 40. 45 dives forward out to the 46-yard line. Handoff. Jarquez Hunter. Jarquez Hunter 50. Jarquez Hunter into the clear. Jarquez Hunter take it to the house. 10-5 touchdown, Jarquez Hunter. What another run by Jarquez Hunter right there. Breaking that run for 55 yards for a touchdown. He's having a day, 67-yard touchdown, 55-yard touchdown. Last week he had 114 yards after contact. That's another game right there after contact. Big play, big run by Jarquez. Great job, great drive, needed by the Auburn Tigers. Play action, Taylor in trouble, throws the passes, complete to the tight end. Oh, what a play! Oh, what a play by DJ James. Fought off a block and took down the tight end at the 35-yard line. Hand off, tailback, first down for the Tigers. Good surge. Play got off in time. It is Thorne. Looks to the end zone. Has a man. Leaping catch at the four-yard line. Jay Fair. First down for Auburn in the Chick-fil-A red zone. Snap down. Kick on the way by McPherson. And the kick is good. Thorne drops to throw. Steps up into the pocket, throws. He's got Fairweather wide open at the 25. 15, 10, 5, touchdown. Rivaldo Fairweather, 53 yards, Auburn to the end zone. Yeah, Rivaldo Fairweather running that deep over route right there. Great job by the offensive line right there. Giving Peyton Thorne a time to sit back there to let that route develop. And the wide open Fairweather catching that ball, running down the sideline for a touchdown. Big, resp big response after the huge penalty by Vanderbilt right there. One play later, Auburn goes right back to Fairweather for the touchdown. Play action. They throw to Alexander. Alexander at the line of scrimmage is taken down on the play. Seals wants to throw. He's in trouble. Seals fumbled the football. Goes down, ball loose. And I think Vandy has recovered it. The snap to Thorne. They rush five. Thorne with time throws. Caught! 
Javarius Johnson to the 40, to the 35, 30, and down and out of bounds at the 20. Jet sweep, left side. It's a touchdown for Jeremiah Cobb. Touchdown, Auburn. Touchdown, Auburn. It's going to consider that a touchdown pass because he tossed it in front of him, so an easy touchdown right there for Peyton Thorne. But this guy, Jeremiah Cobb, you get the ball anywhere in open space, he can go to distance. Great job of cutting that inside right there. Touchdown for Auburn. Snap. Play action by Seals. Gets pressured down. He goes back at the 45. Jalen McLeod with the sack for the Tigers. First and goal from the 10. He's in trouble. Seals goes down. Back to the 23-yard line. Double wide receivers right and left. There's a snap to Seals. With some pressure. Rolls to his right. Sets up. He throws it to the back of the end zone. He throws it out of the back of the end zone. Seals from the gun. Looks and he throws. And it is picked up by Pritchett. He may go the distance to the 40. 35. Makes a man miss and gets to the 30 or the 26. And that will seal the deal on the pick by Nehemiah Pritchett. The third interception of his Auburn career. Yeah, Nehemiah Pritchett right there. Good job of getting his eyes back inside. Playing a 2D zone right there. Knowing that he has safety help over top. They're trying to run that inside seven route, which we call a corner. Nehemiah debated the quarterback a little bit. Got his eyes back inside for a pick right there. Huge interception. Now, Ronnie, that seals the deal, buddy. And the Tigers come to Vanderbilt. They snap a two-game losing streak here at Vanderbilt and win it today by a score of 31 to 15. Championship moments. Celebrating Auburn's 1983, 93, and 2013 football teams is presented by Yellowwood Brand Pressure Treated Pine. If it doesn't have that yellow tag, you don't want it. Auburn entered the 1993 Iron Bowl looking to cap off a perfect season. The Tigers struggled in the first half and Alabama took a 14-5 lead in the halftime. Midway through the third quarter, quarterback Stan White was forced to leave the game with an injured knee and freshman Patrick Nix took over. Facing a fourth and 15, the Tigers needed to convert. Out of shotgun, Patrick Nix. Alabama bringing everybody. Nix is going to float one for Sanders. Sanders, oh, he caught it at the two, and he dived in. Touchdown, Auburn. Touchdown, Auburn. Oh, my goodness. Sanders went up over Tommy Johnson or Antonio Langham. He caught the ball at the two. How he held it, I don't know, but he dived into the end zone, and Auburn's right back at the thick of it. The score put Auburn right back in the game. There's the snap, the spot, the kick is away. This kick is good. And Auburn leads 15-14. Etheridge from 26 yards has given Auburn the lead for the first time here in the second half. A field goal later and Auburn took the lead. The defense stood tall and shut out Alabama in the second half. Here we go on a first down play. Here up the middle, Bostic, five yards, 10 yards, 45, Bostic, 50, Bostic, racing to the 45, to the 40, breaking a tackle to the 30, to the 20, to the 10, he's gone, touchdown, Auburn! The 22-14 win propelled Auburn to its 10th undefeated season in program history. And the Auburn Tigers have put away the Crimson Tide by the score of 22-14. to 11 and 0, 11 and 0, 11 and 0. Welcome back on Auburn Football Every Day. Let's meet Auburn defensive lineman Marcus Harris. For more, visit the flight on War Eagle Plus. Marcus Harris has taken to heart the responsibility of earning and making the most of every opportunity he's been given. It's a mentality he learned from his mother. I see my mom take care of us by herself and still go to school. She still graduated with a master's. And she just taught me that uh, no matter what your circumstance is, find a way. If you, if you really want to do something, you'll find a way to get what you want. It's been a crazy journey. I've been a single parent raising my kids, and football was their escape. That's what they did to, for extracurricular activities, to get out their aggression, to keep them out of negative stuff. You have to incorporate positive things in a child's life. So football was that for them. A lot of nights, I took my kids to class with me. I earned a bachelor's and a master's, matter of fact, two master's degree, one in accounting and one in human resource management, while all along trying to raise them. So 
It was hard, but I loved it. I loved it. For Marcus, football provided the opportunity to follow in his mother's footsteps and pursue a college degree. An Alabama native, he began his journey far from home and far from his mother at the University of Kansas. She's the best mom. Like She'll go to my little brother game on Friday, and then if we have a away game, she'll catch a flight that Saturday morning or that Friday night if she has to. And then come to our away game, she never missed the game. Even when I registered in my freshman year at Kansas, she still came to all the game home in a way. That kind of motivated me to play because one mom coming I'm not, and I'm not playing, it just like made me feel some type of way. I'm like, ah, oh, my mom coming out this way, I'm not playing, so I gotta get on, I gotta get better, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta do something, I'm not doing something right. So that, I, I think that kind of motivated me to like lock in more on football because I know I had a strong support system behind me. He put in the work and decided to enter the transfer portal in 2021, where he caught the eye of the Tigers. When I got in the portal, um, and I got an arm off, she thought I was telling the story. She like, stop, she like, boy, stop playing. Like, ah, oh, nah, mom, for real, I got an arm off. And she just started crying, breaking down. And, and uh, I still remember that day. Let's get it. Seeing my children play is, is the reason why I live. Like, they are my lifeline. So it's surreal to me for him to be on this platform. And I'm just, I just know better things are coming. Big Marcus, you go, hey, we're gonna grind, we're gonna work hard today. Or you, or, you, or you go read your PFL scores, huh? Are we, are we, go, are we gonna grind like we are? All right, work hard work. Don't forget how you got here. Marcus has grown tremendously since we uh, started working with him in the spring. And I think the main thing starts with, you know, his football IQ. And it's just he, his understanding of, here's how we watch film, here's how we break it down. Here's the backfield sets. Uh, when they're back and tight end on the same side, here's what they do. When they're split, here's what they do. So it's the understanding of the game, even before the ball snaps. You top that football IQ with the way he's playing, and he's playing hard, and he's playing physical. Now you have a complete football player. He got the same energy as Coach Jaguar, you know, just he want to see everybody doing the right stuff, and he keep pushing everybody out there. He's an amazing leader. He's a guy that you can go to about mostly anything. Uh, from last year to this year, I think he's playing I, at a whole nother level, and it shows. Tripped up. It was Marcus Harris simply driving back the offensive line right into Jackson Dart. Talk about how good he's been this year. Plays with such tremendous leverage. He's only 295 pounds, but he's very, very low to the ground, right in the middle against Quincy McGee at the left guard, just pushing him back into the QB. I don't care how talented you are, if you don't work hard at whatever you do, that's on the field and off the field, somebody will come and beat you out. Hard work beats talent when talent doesn't work hard. So that's what I instilled in them from when they were little all the way up. She like, she like at anything you do, she like, be the best at tying your shoes, be the best at anything. Don't let nobody beat you at anything. She like, cause you had the ability to, to choose to be the best at anything. So that, that's, that's how it gave me motivation. Auburn football every day is brought to you by Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Alabama. We cover what matters. And by War Eagle Plus, coming this fall. War Eagle Plus, it's your team on your time. War Eagle Plus takes you inside the planes with premium content you'll find nowhere else. Do this for Auburn! In-depth features, interviews, and the stories of Auburn women and men as they fly down the field. Auburn wins! And soar on to victory. Coming soon, more of your Auburn Tigers with War Eagle Plus. At Auburn, a spirit that is not afraid meets work, hard work. We're not just learners, we're doers. From classroom to career, an Auburn education changes lives, changes communities, changes the world. We build leaders to shape the future. This is who we are. This is Auburn at Work. Welcome back on Auburn Football Every Day. Last week, head coach Hugh Free surprised Cassidy Woods with a scholarship at a team meeting. Let's take a look. 
Now, I've never done this before, okay? I have never in 31 years of coaching done this before. Dylan, will you open that door and just ask my guest to come in, please? So, y'all meet my friends. This is uh, Kylie and Serenity. And for those of you that don't know, this is the wife and daughter of Cassidy. And I want to tell you, Cassidy, you have a wonderful family. He's, uh, and, and he took out a dead gum private loan just so he could be a part of your team. And today, I want to clear that debt for him and put him on scholarship. Come on. Come on, Cassidy. Come on down with your family, man. Come on. Congratulations, man. Congratulations, man. Yeah. Congratulations to you. Yeah. But I'm so happy for y'all. And man, you have earned it. You come to work every single day with a smile on your face. You stay after practice. And you serve this team well. And man, that is what it's about. It's about serving each other. So congratulations to you, man. Give him a hand. Yeah. Come on, Cassie. I really just want to say thank y'all, man. Like, God's grace and mercy really been over my life. Y'all really have accepted my family, and it's just cool to have this experience with y'all. And just y'all just seeing Serenity grow up. And I just want to say I love y'all, and I appreciate y'all. Thank you. Welcome back on Auburn Football Every Day, driven by Toyota. Next up, the Tigers travel to Fayetteville. Here's a preview. I'm really impressed with them. I think they've lost five games by one score or less to really good football teams. And obviously, they're coming off of a big win on the road in Gainesville. And I think they've got a lot of motivation. And it's a, it's a very scary team. I think they're doing a really good job. They're really good on defense. Stopping the run, and uh, obviously KJ's uh, I've had great respect for him for for many years now, and knew him out of high school. And he's a, he's a great leader, and um, they've kind of gone back to playing um, like they did last year offensively. It appears so, um, and they seem much more conf confident. Said so they've been in close games all year, um, and so they're a good team. They got good players. Um, and, you know, it's going to be a battle. And so we have to come in with the right mindset. Uh, you know, they're battling for their another game. You know, they, I th they have six losses. And so they understand that one more is likely going to knock them out of bowl eligibility. So, uh, you know, they're going to come out and be playing hard. Uh, I'm sure definitely have to, you know, contain the quarterback and, you know, just do a good job of covering our mans and, and getting home when we get KJ in the backfield, being able to, you know, bring him to the ground. Um, and then, you know, just keep it continuing to put play the defense and, and style we play with. Um, I know KJ, he's a big quarterback. He's phenomenal. Um, he can push the ball down field and he can run it also. So just having a dual threat is always a plus for any team. Um, but I feel like we can get after him. We're going to cause problems for him in our secondary. Uh, you flick on the game and you see that um, they do a lot of good things. They, they mix it up. They bring different pressures. Uh, they got good speed in the back end, and they got uh, good size up front. So um, their linebackers look to be skilled players. And then number 40 off the edge uh, is a is a solid player. And you know, people say he's probably going to go in the first or second round. So uh, he's he's a good player. We celebrated the last win, and uh, now it's time to come up and and really to evaluate the tape and see how we can get better, and then you know to flush this one and move on to the next one, and then just continue to be hungry, like I said, which is we've had, so it's a great sign, and um, just can't wait to get with the guys and create the plan, and then you know go execute it on Saturday. You know, I, I've I'm not one to I never set goals at the beginning of the year. I just think that. The goal ought to be the journey and the process of how do you prepare every single day for those opportunities that are coming. Because you've all seen we play in a league where a lot of things can happen and you can have injuries that affect you and you can lose. The ball just doesn't bounce your way one year. And um, so I just I, I want a group of men 
and young men around us that, man, every day let's just prepare to win this week and see what that says to, to us at the end. But I have been pretty pretty open about the fact that I think going to a bowl game in year one is um, is is – is desired, needed, wanted. Um, I don't know. It's kind of, a, you know, I want the extra practices. I want the seniors to be honored. I want our program, our fans uh, to, to still have the same energy you know, moving into year two. And I think all of that, you know, is, is a part of us, us getting to a bowl. you got to earn it. And we don't have – um, this is not an easy game on the road this week for sure, and um, so we've got, we're going to have to earn it, but it is something we have put out there as something we desire. The game kicks off at 3 o'clock in Fayetteville, Arkansas. Our pregame coverage on the Auburn Sports Network will begin at noon, and we're back with you next week on Auburn Football Every Day, driven by Toyota. <laughs>